Hey what's up, Chin here from Code and Code Tips, today with a new video on slick to d colliders. In this video I will discuss how you can get basic collision into your game and how you can use it efficiently with slick to d This video is intended to help a viewer of me who sent me a comment on how to do an um, yeah how to do and control and player control with collisions with the world and how to do that. So in set and the following videos we will create a simple 2D side scroller as this will include all necessary stuff you will need to know on yeah basically everything about collision and control of a simple player in a simple game. One thing to note before you watch the video, Slick to T colliders are no are no physics so they don't contain um, the whole physics bundle. If you want that you need a physics engine but that's way more complicated and with, if you're up for like a simple project or a simple side scroller and simple top, top down game then this is perfect for you. So let's start. To start off I just created an yeah quite empty slick 2D project. A basic project with a basic game um, class where we will do all our stuff with our init, render and update method. The only thing you will see here is my debug as my draw debug lines method, which is basically down here. You don't have to worry too much about it, um, the whole source code is in the description, you can view it on GitHub. Um, just to show you what the method does, um, I will run the project at the start. Here you go. I just draw in some debug lines, which will make it easier to place our objects later on in the video. So let's start. So what are, how do you collect or how do you I don't know, how do you detect collisions in Slick2D? So there's a basic way to do that, which is called, um, or which Slick calls a shape. So you can basically create a shape and check collisions. You will see what a shape is in a second, so we will just create a shape object first and then you will see what they do. So we type... Um, sorry for that, that was my phone. Um, so let's go on. To create a shape object, um, we just define a new object, private, and we will call it shape, or the class will be shape, and what we will call it like will be, um, I will call it circle, give me a second, circle, here we go, because um, a circle is in my opinion one of the easiest shapes you can imagine. Um, you can hover over the shape here, and you will see several shapes to import. Set one that we want is basically set one from slick, so org.netra.slick.geom. And here we go. We got a new circle object. Now we need to init it in our init method. That's quite simple. Our circle equals a new circle. Which makes sense because we want to create a circle. So here we go. Um, it's not imported, so we import it again. And here we go, it shows an error because the circle needs some arguments in its constructor. What it needs is its center point with x and y coordinates and its radius. So if we want to place the center of our circle at, let's say, x100, y100, then our circle center will be at that position and the radius will be, let's say, 50 pixels. So all that is in pixels. If we now start our program, well, nothing will happen. Um, well, that's nice, because we need to render our circle. To do that, we go down here to our render method, and we call g.draw. The draw method of the graphics will take a shape as an argument, and it will send rendered on the screen. So just um, fill in circle, and we will now draw our circle to the screen. So, start the program. Here we go, here's the circle. Um, you might notice it's gray. That's because my debug line method here sets the drawing color to gray. To change that, we can say color. Here we go. And here we can set the color in which we want to draw. I will say color.green. As we want to draw our objects in green for now. What that will do is, it will let everything that's rendered or Basically, it will set the drawing color of the graphics object to green. And from set point on, it will draw everything in green until we set a new color. So every simple polygon, every single circle, every box that we draw, every debug thing we draw, will be drawn in set color until we reset that color. So if we start that now, here we go, our circle is green, very nice. 
Um, to go on, we will just create some more basic objects. I will introduce you to the four, I think four, yeah, most basic objects that you will need for your games. So the next object that you obviously need is a rectangle. So we can say we want another shape which isn't rectangle. Uh, maybe we want a thing called a polygon. So I will, I will just create that. I will talk about it later on. And the last thing we want maybe is a line because, well, a line isn't quite easy things that we can call out with. Let's start out with the line. Uh, that's very simple. So let's say line equals um, new line. Here we go. Um, if you don't want to import everything on its own, you can go on the top here and you will see everything from the geometric stuff is in the slick geom package. So you can just import geom.star and we will have everything imported. So what arguments do a line need? Uh, so it's quite simple. We need a start point and an end point for our line. So I will say the start point is at the center of our circle. And the end point will be uh, somewhere on our circle. With that I can also show you easily that the radius of our circle is exactly 50. So if I say the end point is 50 points further um, right, so 50 points further on the x-axis, and we render it now, we should see oh, nothing. Well, I forgot to draw it. Here we go. G dot draw circle. Oh, not circle. Damn it. Screw me. We want to draw the line, of course. If you now start that, you can see we got a line with a starting point, which is also the center point of our, um, here we go, of our circle, which is x100, so sets 50, sets 100, y 50 100 so we here we are at 100 100 which is the center of our circle and the start of our line and if we go 50 right to x 150 y 100 we have the end point of our line and we also can see the radius of our circle is 50. so let's in, let's add in some more objects as that is uh, what we want to do today so let's go and create a rectangle equals new rectangle that's how easy it is and here you go, we want to create a new rectangle. For a rectangle you need the top left corner of the rectangle and you need the width and the height. So I want to say my rectangle should start at 200, 200 and it should be, yeah, let's say, 100 width and 50 high. Uh, here we go, add a semicolon. And I think I misspelled rectangle, yeah, screw me. Here we go, rectangle. Uh, my English is not really good, as you can tell here. We want to draw our rectangle, g dot draw, and we want to draw it. So if we run it now, we got a rectangle, which is uh, top left position here, as we said it, and the width 100, height 50. No problem, that's very easy. So let's go on. The so next object is a polygon object. A polygon object can basically define any object with a specific outline, so to say. With a polygon object, you define the basically the points of an yeah of a polygon shape. So, if I want to draw a triangle, a triangle has three um, three edges or yeah three points that it needs. It needs one point here, for example, one point here, and one point here. This would create a triangle if we would basically draw a line from here to here and line from here to here, and a line from here to here. So, to be a bit more clear, a rectangle basically consists out of a lot points, and it will just connect all of the points, so it will connect the first point with the second point, the second with the third, the third with the fourth, and so on, and it will connect the last point to the first point. And then you will have an object with an outline. Um, I'm gonna show you that as an example of a triangle. To do that, you will first need to yeah, define your polygon object. So poly equals new polygon. Here we go. We got a new polygon. Um, we want to draw our polygon for sure. G dot draw poly. Um, once again, you will notice if we start it now. Um, here we go. It crashes as we have not defined any points in the polygon, but the polygon needs points. So uh, let's change that. And to define points in a polygon, you will need an array of flats, or an array of position points, or an array of numbers, yeah. You will basically need to say it where the positions of the 
points it contains should be. To do that, you need an array with flat values, so a new flat array here, which we will call our poly positions or something like that. And that should equal a new flat array. If you're not familiar with arrays in Java, uh, let me know in the comment, I can do a separate video on that, but I won't um, stop now for um, such basic Java, su Java stuff. So here we go. We created a new empty flat array. So that's great. And then we'll take that array and give it to our polygon in the constructor, which will basically say to our polygon, we want to use those numbers for our points of the polygon. So how do we define the polygon now? Um, well, we can't start now. Uh, we need to say first, we need to say the first point. So where's the first x and where's the first y of the first point? So if I want to say I want to make a triangle, which top left point is at 400, 400. Um, then I will, here we go. If we do that, give me a second, I'm gonna end steam. Here we go. If we say set, we will have one point at 400, 400. If we start now, uh, we will see nothing, as we only have defined a single point in our space, which does not show anything. We need to define a second point to see in first result. So, our first point is x400, y400. So let's define a second point at, let's say, x500, y500. So that's nice. If we now start and click play, you will see our first point is e here, our second point is here, and we connect the poles with a line. If we now want to make a triangle which goes from here to here to here and back, we will need to set our last point here and that last point will then automatically connect to our start point. So let's do that. So that's quite easy. We just add two more um, values to add a new point in space. So our x position of set point should be um, let's say x300 and y500. What that will do, it will set a third point in space, which is here, and it will connect the first to the second, the second to the third, the third to the starting point, because we don't have a fourth point. You can, can go on and add more points, so if I just say, yeah, let's add a new point, I can do that, that's no problem. So let's say I want to add a new point at 350, 450, that's no problem, it should work, I don't know how it looks like. Oh well, screw me, fail again, here we go add a new point and sets here so we have a new point and with set you can basically define any shape so now we have defined what shapes are and what we can do with shapes now we need to go into the collision stuff to do that you will need one basic method which is really basic and that method is called um here we go it's called you take a first object and on that object you call the intersects method intersects method what that will do is it will look if one shape actually collides with another shape, if they overlap some, somehow. So if we want to check that and we say with our line, what that method will do, it will take our circle and compare it with our li line and it will return true if they both collide and it will return false if they don't collide. So that's a basic idea. Um, what we can do now is we can say we can move our circle freely um, to actually see some collision working. To do that, I'm gonna get some very simple code into the update method, which is nothing special. Here we go. We just resets, resets the circus, um, sorry. Uh, we will reset the circus position every update call to the mouse X and mouse Y. So basically, if I start that now, the center of our circle is where our mouse is and we can move it. And um, if I now like go over the line, nothing will happen because we haven't defined anything that we want to do if they both collide. To do that, we need to say, well, if our circle collides with our line, well, what do we want to do then? Let's say we want to get our circle drawn in a red color if it collides with anything or at first if it collides with the line. To do that, I'm going to say we don't draw the circle up here. We draw it down here. And now comes the uh, graphics objects into our, yeah, into our, I don't know. Now we need the graphic object. To do that, we want to say only if our circle collides with our line, then we want to reset the color to color.red. What that will do is 
if our circle collides with our line, then we will set the color to red and all upcoming drawing calls will be red. So our circle will be red. Um, let's test it out. I'm going to show you what I mean. So if our circle is somewhere here, nothing happens, no problem. If our circle hits the line, the line um, then you will see that the if statement is true and if it collides, the circle will turn red, which is nice. Yeah. Um, to check the collision for every object, we will need to check also the collision to our rectangle and the collision to our polygon. So let's say if it collides with our lane or with our rectangle or if it collides, ah, give me a second, with our polygon. So now if anything collides with our circle, here we go, we will draw it red. With that you have basic collision in your game. So let's sum it up what you need for collision. You need to define shapes for everything in game and then you need to check the collision from every shape to every shape where you are interested in collisions. So for example, if you want to go for a player in a level, then you need to check the collisions, the collision box or the collider for the player, the shape for the player, with every shape from the game world. Does that make sense? Um, one thing to notice at the end, if you're really interested into collisions is, if you got like 100 or 200 objects on the screen, that you want to compare every frame call, that can get really, really, really CPU heavy, which is not good. Um, to prevent that, you can say, uh, you can get special algorithms for that, but for a basic, for a really basic platformer or for a basic game, it will be enough for like an, I don't know, more room game. Um, it will be more than enough for simple games. But if you want to go for like an arcade space shooter with hundreds of bullets, then you will need techniques like um, hash collisions, I guess they're called, hash map collisions or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, I would need to look the exact name up. But for that, you have a project where you can detect every collision with that and that's enough to start for a game. Um, in the next episode, we will talk about um, getting an actual player into our game so what we will do will is we will create a player that is affected by gravity and that will actually stop falling down if it hits the ground plane and the player will also be able to move yeah let's say our player will be able to move somehow and it will be able the player will be able to interact with the world and it will be able to be co controlled by the player so basically i'm gonna show you a really simple 2d side scroller jump and run um, setup that you can use in your project. In the next tutorial we're gonna talk about the basic for that and in the next video after that we're gonna talk about how to implement a whole game using tiled maps and our collisions. So you have basically one game example because that's what I've seen on, in a lot of comments that people want to see a whole project, they want to see how to create something complete because they're like, yeah, I got all those little tutorials, but how can I put them together to get a real game? So I'm going to cover that within the next tutorials. And as always, if you liked the video, feel free to let me a like down there if you like it. If you don't like it, then just do nothing. Or please, if you don't like it, comment me and tell me what's bad about my videos, because I always want to try to get my videos better. And if you have a question, also let it down in the comments. I will try to answer it within one day. Usually I can do that and I will try to help you as good as I can with your game. If you really enjoy my videos, also subscribe to my channel as you then won't miss new episodes. With that said, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.